What's up, everyone? Welcome. We are live right now on Cannabuzz. And if you are watching us right now on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. We've got a great interview for you today. We are with Chef Sebastian Carosi. We're going to be talking all about Rick Simpson oil or RSO oil and how you can use this oil to help you in your life with your ailments or just help to make your life better. So stay tuned for all that. JR has a great show put together a lot of really great questions but before we get into that i've got a few shout outs that i need to make first off shout out to everyone in the cannabis community you guys help make this all this whole thing possible so thank you so much please join our cannabis community we've got people in our live stream chat right now watching us and if you're in our community you can join that live chat and ask uh questions for our guests we do bring in guest questions at the end of our interviews so uh join the community your support goes a long way and you also get entered into our seed giveaways that we do at the end of every show so search cannabis and use uh, or sorry search cannabis on the app store download the app and use code growers love for 50 percent off your first month also shout out to our friends over at terplock the makers of grove bags uh, go to grovebags.com and grab one of these bags this is a bag to cure your weed to perfection you dry it in your tent or whatever your drying situation is and then you throw it in a bag and then you zip it shut and you're good to go don't have to worry about burping or anything like that. So go to grovebags.com, use the code CANNABUS for 7% off your next order. And then lastly, of course, shout out to our friend Tiki Madman at uh, tikiseeds.com. He's always hooking us up with the latest news. And the latest news right now is our summer sale, 20% off over at tikiseeds.com. Uh, so shout out to Tiki Madman. And then also I've got a... Quick shout out that I just remembered, JR. Shout out to our store. If you want a Cannabuzz hat, JR's got a Cannabuzz hat, Cannabuzz t shirts, all sorts of things. Go to shop.cannabuzz.app and you can grab yourself a hat or a shirt or anything like that. Oh, and then we have another thing that I'll shout out in just a second as we get into our intro. But let's get into it. <laughs> Welcome to a great episode that we have for you today with Chef Sebastian Carosi. As a part of our uh, celebration with this episode, we do have a giveaway. We are giving away a source uh, craft, or sorry, turbo extract craft. Let's uh, maybe I'll throw it over for Jr. to get into the specifics of the device because he's <laughs> way more familiar <laughs> with it uh, than me. But yeah, uh, hit him with the details, Jr., and then I'll also help with the website detail. Excellent. So uh, we have uh, Extract Craft. Uh, they have a couple of uh, uh, Eco machines and their ethanol machines. Uh, they have the Source Turbo, which is the one we'll be giving away. And then they also have the Eto Pro, uh, which is kind of the next level up if you want to do about a pound per hour. Uh, but these machines are recovering uh, the alcohol uh, and they're able to make it to where it's not so expensive to make your medicine at home by yourself and you can dial in your dosage and find the edible amount that's going to work best for you and that's some of the stuff uh that we're going to be talking about today so shout out to extractcraft.com they also have extractcraft420.com which is one that's more geared for our community <laughs> and uh there's a lot of re uh, learning resources on both and uh yeah we're really excited to have them uh participate and hook in our people up with uh one of their units so yeah if you are watching this in the first couple of weeks that this episode is out uh you still have time so go to uh, giveaway.cannabuzz.app in your browser. Just type that address in giveaway.cannabuzz.app in your browser and you'll enter in your email address and that will enter you to win. But all right, enough of all the preambles. Let's get into it. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. We're going to be uh, talking all about the cannabis warrior Rick Simpson. He was a medical marijuana activist from Canada. And Chef Carosi will help us dial into how you can use Rick Simpson oil and RSO and how all these different um, oils and how that all works today. Um, he's going to be talking all about 
how you can uh, construct it or make it and then use it and the baking preparation, all sorts of things. So thank you so much. Welcome back to the show, Chef Sebastian Carosi. What's up, y'all? What's going on? Hey, man, <laughs> thanks for joining us. Glad to be here. I really appreciate it, JR and, and Sam. Yeah, it's going to be a good time, buddy. We got a lot to go over, so we'll try to keep this train on track. But uh, you know how it is when me and you get together. We may we end up going all over the place. but uh, It's all good. We cover all the information and more. <laughs> good. I'll let Q start off with our first uh, converse, our topic in question. Sure. So, um, so yeah, like I said at the top, we I mentioned the name Rick Simpson. So let's talk about him. Can you give our listeners a background on who this person is and how he got to be involved with the cannabis community? So I uh, forgot to say uh, thank you to Cannabuzz, Q, JR, for having me on. Um, and uh, talking about Rick Simpson is kind of uh, dear to my heart. My, my father had the same... Uh, type of skin cancer that Rick Simpson was dealt in to the year 2000. And um, my father actually did the same exact treatment once he found out how to make RSO or Rick Simpson oil. Um, and my father for having Merkel cell skin cancer was given two months to live. And that was nine years ago. Um, and, you know, and we can't attribute it all to the cannabis because it's not like it's a magical pill or the RSO. You have to change your lifestyle. You have to add things in. Um, and, you know, really dial down what the cannabinoids are going to do in your body once you've taken a pure form of full spectrum, uh, you know, cannabis extract like RSO, you know, usually from root to tip. Um, so, you know, Rick Simpson being from Canada uh, in the year 2000, you know, he is the, the, the true warrior uh, and help scientific push behind anybody grasping on to saying, wow, this really does do something because, you know, we get we get to looking at things with the, the, the cannabis world and we see we don't see effects. But let me tell you this. If you have a child that's in a full epileptic seizure and you stick a syringe, uh, a syringe of RSO in their th in their mouth, it's almost instantaneous. Within 10 to 15 seconds, the child will snap out of that seizure. So when they say it has no medicinal values, I say get fucked. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah, I, I think can... that I think that's kind of a testament to what we, you know, as a community has have had to do. We haven't had the luxury of uh, well-funded science and the availability uh, that everyone else in the community might have. So we have been doing this anecdotally on our children, ourselves, our animals, our pets for eons, really. I mean, the struggle that we talk about, it maybe be the last couple hundred years, but we have been doing this on ourselves with ourselves for a very, very long time. And so uh, for Rick to come out and uh, kind of open up that whole thing, I think, um, I think was very cool. So, um, how did he kind of go from just being a guy who treated his own skin cancer to such a strong advocate for our, our for full extract cannabis oil? You know, being in Canada, um, they moved a little bit faster than us. So in 2000, you know, when he had found out that he had skin cancer around 2003, um, he made full claims that he had treated that those those blotches or dots of skin cancer with this recipe uh, that he made, you know, and uh, an ethanol extraction of a soak of cannabis and then basically an evaporation down cannabinoids are left and you have, you know, these syringes of RSO that are readily available. They're topical, dabable and edible. And in that case, he was like you, he, like you were saying earlier, JR, he was eons ahead of doctors, scientists and you know, it's hard for us. I know you made a comment just a second ago about saying how we were giving this to kids and our kids and stuff. You're not lying. A lot of us risk being in prison. Um, my my partner in particular, Carla, risked her life uh, and her kids and her kids' life. If she got caught growing back in the day, you lost everything, your kids, your house, you know. So in Canada, Rick being able to have this uh, accessibility of some of the testing and self-testing, uh, you know, um, 
he was able to explore the medicinal benefits that a lot of us are knowing are there, but you know, don't approach because cannabis side effect is really simple. You get high. The side effects of some of the pharmaceuticals are, and the, and the, and the chemotherapy is loss of hair, loss of appetite. You know, cannabis gives you your appetite back. So the, the realm of medicinal benefits that Rick was looking at and self-testing was huge, you know, and then it's, it's just like what would happen in the United States. He was self-treating himself. And, you know, later on, he had to leave. Uh, RCMP raided him again for giving away free Rick Simpson oil, which, you know, uh, we will repeat this. Rick has never made a dollar off RSO. The whole journey for Rick is the encouragement of everybody to make their own, grow their own, so that their medicine is part of them and their, the, you know, the area that they're living in. Um, and I, I think those are hugely important factors that the pharmaceutical companies, you know, Big Pharma is not going to tell you. They don't want you to know. So can you explain to our listeners what exactly is Rick Simpson oil? You know, if, if I've gone to uh, a store, I may have seen it in like pill form, or maybe I've seen like syringes, like you say, like if you, especially if you still live in like a, a medical state, you might see those at the store, but I don't, I might not really know what it is. So what, what is Rick Simpson oil? So RSO, Rick Simpson oil is a, uh, the extraction process uh, became very cru 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 crucial because Rick did a, what was called wetting of the cannabis, you know, breaking the cannabis up. Some people don't break it up, but breaking the cannabis up so that there's surface area exposed and wetting and soaking the cannabis with ethanol. And I think Rick did food grade ethanol. Canada's ethanol is a little bit different than Americans. Actually, um, Canadian ethanol is far superior, I believe, even food grade. Um, but, you know, that's what Rick used. Um, and then his solvent, his specific solvents, um, were able to break down those compounds and give them what's needed, Speci specifically things that were a little bit beyond THC and CBD, uh, other parts of the plant, to give that more full, rounded entourage effect. Whereas when you're thinking of isolates and distillates and things like that, you're really isolating certain compounds, burning off and evaporating other compounds that are truly necessary uh, to achieve that entourage effect. And, you know, Rick did it topically, you know, he put the RSO directly on the, the cancerous spots and orally in mega doses, not what people think I would do what a dose that I would do of that extracted Rick Simpson oil would probably have me looped for several hours, but you know, that the, his extraction process um, was able to get out a lot of the primary enzymes and, and all the things that were needed that a lot of people just weren't touching on unless you were in a lab basically in Israel and were on the level of Ethan Russo. You know, right. we just didn't have it. So yeah, it's really simple. Once you get down to it, I mean, you can soak the cannabis, which basically uh, the source turbo makes it really simple. You know what I'm saying? Everything's right there in the machine. You add your flour. It, the process makes it like... I, I hate to say it, it stupefies it for somebody like me that's like, yeah. you know, I, I'm not used to science projects, bro. I'm used to baking cakes, you know, um, and this is as simple as that. Uh, that's why yeah. the market is just, it's beautiful to have it on your countertop to be able to do it yourself now, like he preached, like Rick preached. Right. Yeah. And I think one of the things that make it so versatile is its ability uh, to do not just butter, not just oil, but you could do tinctures, anything that you can mix your base RSO oil into, uh, you can use as a product. And with a little bit of uh, uh, education, like I said, through their website, uh, you can make a, a RSO product that is going to be a lot easier on your stomach and your digestive system. And uh, the way you can winterize stuff, your tincture and stuff will it's all going to make a better product for you than the old days. Like we used to just strain it out onto a cake pan and just let it evaporate into the air. And you were left with what we called hippie oil. Um, but back then we would just wipe it on our joints. We didn't really realize, you know, the edible potential of it until later uh, when I started learning about Rick Simpson and Rick Simpson's oil. And, 
Uh, like, you know, we're going to touch on a little bit here in a second is the, the way that our bodies metabolize um, those full spectrum things that we're getting out of it. And yeah. that's the, th the thing about the RSO is, like uh, Chef said, we're not just pulling out THC. We're not just pulling out uh, CBD. We're giving all those cannabinoids, even the ones that we don't even know anything about, uh, a, pr a chance to be present. And so um, I think as we shift on to some of the metabolizing part of it, it's going to be really interesting. And yeah. uh, Q's going to kind of kick that one off for us. Totally. Yeah, no, you you just made me think, um, JR, uh, you know, uh, about a month ago or so, we had a grower from uh, Northern California, Huckleberry Hill Farms, and he was talking about legacy how some of, grower. Yeah, he, he has some legacy. of his strains have terpenes that you can't even they're not even like testing for, or whatever, you know what I mean? So just to your point, JR, like, we're getting the full spectrum. And where before we we've been missing out on these things that we just don't even know that they're there, you know, because we're not we're not able to quantify them. We're not looking for them, so to speak. But anyways, let's talk about that metabolization process. So, oh, yes. so I'm I'm ingesting this Rick Simpson oil. What's happening? How does. Yeah. What's happening? <laughs> so, you know, in, 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 as we as JR said, being able to make a, a tremendous different amount of edibles and to have a pantry, you know, when you take the source turbo and you make all these different things in your pantry, low dose olive oil, low dose cooking oil, low dose vinegar, any vehicle that you can get cannabinoids in, especially when it's full spectrum RSO, you're going to be able to get that ingested in small amounts in a normal daily thing. And if you do your situation like a one-to-one, -one, you don't have to worry about getting totally twisted until it's time for bed, then you get into the big medicine. But you know, that liver bypass is something that the metabolization of cannabinoids in that liver bypass, I'm going to be honest, I'm a type one diabetic. And if I eat about 10 milligrams of THC and CBD one to one, it's like eating four hits of acid for me. It stays in my body for about eight hours. And it's got that, you know, the, the, the smoking, has got very little effects. It's actually got very little health benefits other than mentally. Um, you know, when we need to ingest the cannabis, we need the liver to get into that bypass so that you can get all the enzymes going and all the cannabinoids in into your body. Um, and it's going to be a lot longer of a process. You're going to get a lot more high if the THC on your one-to-one -one is high versus a CBD, which your THC should be, you know, a good even balance, I believe, um, for the entourage effect to fully benefit. But, you know, we have other things that are going on right now. Um, other delivery methods like LIT, which is lipid in vivo transportation, which is when they're encapsulating cannabinoids to where it bypasses that liver bypass and goes and hits other things. We have... Um, Nano emulsions with nanotechnology is another way that we're using um, to, you know, that bypass, that, that, that absorption rate in the liver for some of us is really detrimental. We get really fucked up, you know, for a long amount of time. And people are, you know, back in the day when they used to make brownies, people are like, oh, my God, that batch of brownies was great. And then, oh, my God, that batch of brownies was killer. And, you know, back in the day, we didn't even know the word decarboxylation. So they were double decarbing or decarbing their weed at a proper temperature for a certain brownie. And they were getting ultra fucked up because they had released all the, you know, volatile compounds that needed to be released. The source, the, the source and uh, RSO process is doing all that for you. Um, you know, and we, we, we've talked RSO and neither JRQ or myself have said the word FECO or FECO, F-E-C-O, you know, and we need to think about that too. There's a big, a, a big, a, a big crowd, a certain end of the crowd that swears on FECO. But, you know, basically for me, the difference that I believe in is the, uh, the extraction process in the two and what is left and what is not. One being full and one being kind of, you know, just a guitar player, not a full band, you know, and they're both good. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. You know, yeah, we're going to, we're going to kind of, I want to kind of, talk about each one of those that people 
are kind of coming across as uh, we as they're in the market right now and they're looking at the shelves, they're going to see a bunch of these different things, uh, Ficos and uh, live rosins and stuff like that. So we're going to try to touch on each of those. And um, one of the things I thought was interesting about the liver thing that you had mentioned is the way when we metabolizes it, it completely enzymatically changes the chemical compounds uh, like that are actually, 11 or something. Yeah. 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 So it's 11 hydroxy. Yeah, 11 hydroxy. Yeah. So that is absorbed into your body in a much more narcotic heavy uh, kind of therapeutic way than just, you know, the effects of THC alone. Um, and that kind of speaks to uh, my next thing I wanted to talk about is, um, you know, those methods of consumption that you talked about. Um, we're familiar with eating, you know, RSO and stuff like that and smoking. But maybe you could let people know about some of those other methods that you were uh, mentioning that people can get some of the cannabinoid uh, therapies. So, so once you've gotten, you know, once the, once you've gotten your, uh, your, your, your product, your good product that you believe is medicinal for yourself, you know, if you can't find it, ask somebody like JR, Hey, where can I get a good quality source grown cannabis? You know, some people that like sun grown, some people don't, you know, uh, find what's right for you because tailoring your medicine is of the utmost importance. So once you have the RSO, and you've got that, I mean, it's really easy. Like the Source Turbo makes it easy as hell. Uh, countertop, make your own RSO from your product. Once you get the RSO, kind of build your pantry around it so that you can have infused oils, infused butters. As a matter of fact, I tasted some butter uh, that was made the other day. JR, I believe you made that. Um, it was phenomenal. It was clean, crisp. It was not overladen with chlorophyll, even though cannabis is usually dried to make it and cured. But it, it was, I, I'm not going to lie. It was one of the cleanest, best tasting can of butters I've had. And, you know, a lot of people lean into the cannabis coconut oil and then MCT. And I don't believe in the uh, liquid coconut oil at room temperature because it's minus some branch chain. It's minus some triglycerides, and all those things are benefit that make it cloudy and solid at room temperature. So make yourself a pantry of low-dose RSO-based. You can call it FECO or FECO or RSO. This dirty, dirty, as I like to call it, is actually telling you that it is made from the root to the top, every bit of the plant not just something the feco or fico that you'll see is kind of scrubbed it's honey looking it's clear you know and it's really it's missing a lot of things to get it that way they had to to do some things to it mechanically yeah. chemically you know and we're just missing yeah. things yeah i was kind of in on that i think it was around 2011 10 ish area I was at the Oregon Finest. They were doing hosting these seminars where uh, people would come in and educate people about growing and this, that, and the other. And this company came in and they started throwing this word around FICO. And I started grilling them like, what's that? You what know? is and that? Like, yeah. Oh, it's full extra cannabis oil. I said, oh, so you mean it's Rick Simpson oil? Oh, no. Rick Simpson uh -huh. is known for using solvents that might not be good for you. And so it was totally their attempt to, uh, A, not monetarily, you know, give him any kind of credit for what he had brought to the table, nor was it giving him any credit for the medical uh, a legacy that he had created in his advocacy. And so it was just a pure branding move. And it just, over the years, I've been kind of going back and forth with it, really, and it just feels slimy to me, you know, at the end of the day, to us, it's Rick Simpson oil. I mean, and before that, it was hippie oil. So, yep. I mean, uh, that whole FICO thing, they'll say whatever they have to say. But uh, at the end of the day, it's it's extracted, full extract cannabis oil. You know, and you I know. think a lot of it is goes behind too. They scrub it and it's minus a lot of the things. That's why it's clear and honey licking. It looks good on the shelf. 
you know, and they, that, that, that marketing goes to the bucolic picture on a pack of bacon of a farm. There is no fucking farm where that pig lives. It's a factory, you know? Right. So, you know, I know if some dirty hippie made this and nothing against any dirty hippies, I'm just one that took a shower. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, if they give me this dirty, dirty, I actually know that I'm getting quality medicine. When I go to a store, um, you know, the Walmart of weed here in Vancouver or Portland and buy RSO off the shelf, you can get FECO, FECO for $8. It's clear. It looks like honey. And it's kind of like one noted. So if yeah. I'm making that pantry full of medicinal products for myself, you know, from that, you know, RSO made from the or Rick Simpson oil made from the source turbo, I want to put it in things that have got some fat carriers. You know, I want to have it in vinegar. I want to have it in olive oil. You might even be a person that is on the level uh, of cancer treatment where you need to fill big gel caps and, and use it as a suppository because that's been done and it works. You know, there's every method that you can do, but getting mega amounts in and then keeping it going, uh, you know, like taking a vitamin, smaller doses throughout, you know, he went mega dose, mega dose, mega dose. He had a, a, a strict regime, but I believe with some of us that don't necessarily uh, approach a, a medical problem of that caliber, maybe we just want to preempt it by putting it in our diet in smaller doses so that it's, we are feeding that endocannabinoid system, you know? Um, and, and that, that 11 hydroxy double, triple liver pass, single liver pass or whatever, you know, that, uh, it, it's long lasting. It gets us wicked fucked up, but it is m medically needed to ingest the amounts of cannabinoids that are, are fu full spectrum cannabinoids that are needed to, help with these things that we're saying, you know, this cures cancer and stuff. It, it, it is, it's not showing that it doesn't, you know, and I, and on all the haters that are like, Oh, is the extraction, the um, uh, what's it called? The solvent that Rick Simpson's using is so bad. Think about it like this. He rubbed that RSO made from that ethanol on open wounds on his hand and it fucking healed. It didn't get any worse. Right, right, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, so and I think that... Go ahead, Sam. I was curious, because I, I don't... I was just looking through our no notes, and I don't see anything, um, or I wasn't sure if it's in there, so apologies if it is, JR, but I would I'd just take a pit stop real quick to hear both of you guys talk about what do you think it is doing uh, Rick Simpson oil in terms of, like, fighting cancer and things like that? Because it's just... It's such an interesting medicine that it you know and, and cancer just impacts so many of us obviously it impacted uh jr uh not too long ago but you know so many of our family members get cancer and and just the i i'm excited about the idea of using cannabis but i've just like you were just saying chef carosi it was just like you you, you kind of second JR. guess it and first. all this kind of stuff yeah my thing about uh my thing about it with cancer is it's two parts. There's the one part about the autopsy that they talk about and also in the way that it doesn't allow the cell, the cancer cell to continue to mutate. Uh, but then there's the side of it of everything else that goes along with cancer that affects the way you heal, the stress that you have, the lack of nutrition that you often deal with, like, chef mentioned all of these things play a part of it so the stress the eating the not being able to sleep uh, all those things compound themselves and affect your immune system and so to me there's the actual science part of it that i think is still uh yet to be fully quantified right and then there is the other side of it that we all know about it in the way that it helps you deal with it, not just get cured. And it's all part of, like I said, our immune response. All of that plays a factor. Yeah, you know, JR, um, I brought in a guest. It says on the screen for my name, you know, by the way, I am Chef Sebastian Carosi, the short order cannabis revolutionary. It says Carla down there. And <laughs> we were talking about, we were talking about cancer 
you know, and I'm going to let her take about 45, 50 seconds and let her explain uh, her trip with not only RSO, cannabis and cancer, live acting. And then I'll talk just for a short minute about my experience with cancer and Rick Simpson oil. And uh, so this is Carla. This is my better half, as you can tell by the awesome. looks. <laughs> Hi, Carla. Hi. Uh, this is unexpected. So uh, give me a second to gather my thoughts. Um, so yes, I'm about, I'm a little over 10 years cancer free. Um, at the time when I was diagnosed, I was a single mother. So the option for uh, chemo and radiation therapy were not really they weren't very viable options because my children weren't old enough to take care of themselves and I didn't have a support system um, to care for them in my stead. So I looked into natural means. At the time, there wasn't a whole lot. What kind of cancer did you have? So I had uh, stage four cervical cancer. Wow. Um, so, um, so at the time, there's not like a whole lot out there, um, but my understanding was that Jack Herer was the medical strain. So that's what I grew. And, um, you know, RSO was a large part of both my diet, but also it was, a, I topically applied without getting into too much detail this is a family show right <laughs> um and again i i i'm very thankful you know i I did have to have a radical hysterectomy um but again i'm 10 years with no radiation or chemotherapy and um I'm you had a medical license healthy. medical yeah. Yeah. So, i mean ultimately that when you're when you're sick um so having a full-time job is just impossible so growing for myself turned into me having five patients and then which was at the time what i could uh legally have i tried to keep everything as legal as i mean just legal 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 i even filed taxes on every dime that i made and they held my fucking tax return for like two years uh. i won't even go there Anyways, um, but yeah, like I ended up, um, I started making concentrates in RSO both for myself and then for my patients um, because it was, again, there wasn't a whole lot of information out at that time about what was the best way to medically apply cannabis for your health and, mo and well-being. So right. it was so, and then eventually it was, you know, it was BHO. <laughs> so, right. um, you know, it like everything cannabis evolved thank so you. my experience thank you baby by the yeah. way yeah thanks for sharing thanks, your Carla. story thanks, my Carla. experience <laughs> my experience was my father um got cancer merkel cell skin cancer and was given uh two months to live and he had already been a grower from the 60s old school and um he he was never like a go out and get a suntan type of person. You know, he was a doctor. He was inside under the fluorescent lights all day. And um, I mean, this was a long time ago. This was, you know, back when this this whole uh, uh, hippie oil thing got started, you know, before it was even called RSO. Um, and I saw he's alive today. This is what, 11 years, 12 years later. So the the fact that when people say, no, I can't give you cannabis, but let me do tell you, you only have two months to live. All that psychological crock of shit's got to stop. Yeah, right. You know, in a hospital, because you you could drive a person to actually, and I'm going to say this not in a negative way, but you can actually drive a person to kill themselves quicker than they're going to die just by telling them they only have this certain amount of time. And the yeah. last time I checked, all these certified big educated doctors are still only practicing medicine. Right practicing medicine so they can't say this doesn't work this doesn't work this works because i'll tell you what the romans they rubbed carrot seed oil and chamomile seed oil on wounds and i don't see chamomile in any of our band-aids but they also don't say that it's not beneficial because we drink chamomile tea every night to soothe ourselves you know right right um, so yeah the the effects and the uh the amount of um the amount of benefits that I've seen are nothing but beneficial, mm -hmm. nothing but beneficial being stoned and being on the couch and eating a big old bowl of cereal. There's nothing wrong with that. You know? Yeah. I had that. I had that similar conversation with my father because I felt, I felt kind of 
you know, in a way kind of guilty in my relationship yeah. with him, just with him. Everyone else, I pretty much didn't give two fucks about, but for yeah. my father, it was different. And that was the comment he made to me is like, son, if the medicine you take to help you makes you feel happy and makes you feel high, yeah. then you should be thankful because I have COPD and I have to take medicines like prednisone that make me a complete asshole. So, you know, yeah. you shouldn't feel bad that your medicine makes you feel good. Exactly. And so, um, so, another, yeah, go ahead. sorry, another thing, and, and I want to point out to people is we are talking about these full extract offerings. And so if you're getting edibles out there that are coming from a distillate, uh, you may find that they're very one compound or two compound products and you're not going to get that full uh and another term that's thrown out is a full spectrum uh, uh extract or oil uh it's basically uh the same thing um and now we've even got which i think is exciting really to be honest with you uh we've got edibles out there that are live rosin uh edibles and I think that's an awesome way. So, Chef, can you maybe uh, talk a little bit about the rosin process and how it apply, would apply in a culinary oily type uh, situation? Yeah, so basically when we get any of these extracts that we're talking about, BHO, CHO, PHO, live resin, rosin, solventless, uh, to all of the um, can of geeks out there is probably what they would call the cream of the crop. You know, it really hasn't touched any kind of solvent material or anything like that. So, you know, and they, they've got these, um, these presses that are either low temp or high temp presses. And basically you put some ground up cannabis in a, in a, in a bag that's got fine microns and they press it under low heat or high heat for a short amount of time or for a lengthy amount of time. A lot of the, the but the people that make squish that's another thing that we call it the solventless they they tend to be a little secretive about their you know their process their temperatures their times so on and so forth but you know the temperature and time is also good back to how much of the volatile terpenes are still left how much of the volatile cannabinoids are still left you know the the solventless process even heat is is deteriorating things time breaks things down you know, time's the deteriorator of cannabinoids. And a lot of people don't realize that. That's why you guys get so into curing your weed and how you cure your buds and so on and so yeah. forth. And I don't yeah. mean to separate myself by saying you guys. You guys all know that I murder cannabis for a living. I kill the plants. <laughs> they grow it. <laughs> yeah, you know, and it's funny you say that because the heat uh, does change the chemical compounds of the oil that's coming out. Like I know there has to be some THCA, CBDA conversions that are happening if you use too much heat when you're making your presses. So uh, being able to pull out, you know, techniques that don't do a lot of manipulation in the actual chemical compounds of what's being offered by the plant, um, I think that avenue is very exciting. Yeah. And, you know, for me, the, the fact that while we were all smoking weed for medicinal benefits, you know, we were only getting about one and a half to three percent max. You know, when we started yeah. adjusting it and really start talking about the medicinal benefits of that 11 hydroxy that, you know, what we can do to get certain things past that and past the liver and the metabolization of things. We're going beyond just being weed growers and weed consumers and weed enthusiasts. We're we're advocating for our health for Christ's sakes, you know. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and it uh, a lot of uh, a lot of the people that I'm around and that I kind of communicate with, we all started in the medical days. You know, we were medical providers uh, before we were anything else, and so for a lot of us, we were started out. I I would say with a similar story to Carla, you know, Yes, I'm, I'm making medicine for myself. All my buddies are like, Hey, that shit's fire. Can you make more? I'm like, I think I can. And so it just kind of goes from there. And then the next thing you know, you got a couple buddies, you're stacking cards and you're really helping folks. You know, what we offered to the patients here 
in our community was not just the two ounces of flour a month, but they got RSO, they got cookies, edibles, hash, bubble, all that stuff, and they paid zero dollars for it. That's the and, key. And so that all, that whole system, I think, is what we're trying to give back to the people. Uh, and the only way me and Sam feel like we can accomplish that is through teaching people to be self-sufficient. So they're not reliant on other systems. So you're a chef. You know me. We have things in common that we can barter with, like ramps right. from Virginia, which, by the way, were fantastic. Hell yeah. And <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, we can really keep things close to our own community. And with the ability to uh, become self-sufficient through something like that, uh, Source Turbo, uh, uh, think of how much money you're going to save in our edibles, just alone. Oh, it's yeah. an incredible, incredible amount. Yeah, because edibles have to be tested. The material has to be tested. It has what's brought in. The final product has to be tested. All these testing requirements and, and and pastry chefs and all that stuff is not cheap. And, and you know, so me and you, you live in Portland. I live in Vancouver. We have a river, you know, the Columbia River that divides us. And I can buy five 10 milligram candies wrapped up and you can buy a different amount right across the river. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so that independence I think you can gain for for people through a product like that is is the kind of thing that me and Sam are pushing behind. And and these guys are very generous in uh giving one of the I mean they're what, like five hundred dollar machines. Yeah. yeah. And so being able to hook people up like that, which we will be able to do hopefully on a more regular basis, stay tuned, uh, is something exciting and uh, Chef is also uh, deep into the world of uh, fun guy. And uh, so uh, our season is coming up here real shortly. It feels like it might be a mile away, but it's coming up real soon. And if we have a good season, we might have some episodes on using that source uh, uh, turbo uh, to do something with that, too. So that's just a little tease uh, for future stuff to come. Yeah, you know, JR, I want to I want to make a good point. You know, we talked a lot about, you know, we talked, we, we ran across some big words that some can of geeks don't understand that are medical terms. We talked about all sorts of different types of extraction methods and things. But the one thing I do want to make clear and show kind of me, my stance, we go into the stores, you can only get a certain amount of cannabinoids in your product. Generally, if we're talking about true medicine, you are not going to be able to buy in one day in the store what you're going to truly need. The other yeah. thing that I want to get touch on is hugely important to me. Sugar causes cancer. Cannabis is a cancer combatant. Quit making fucking gummies and sugar vehicles for cannabinoids. It may be great. And I know it's a novelty and, you know, we can pop them here and there and it's really good. But just think about what I said. Sugar causes cancer in all its forms, whatever you want to call it, saccharide, sucrose, fructose, all, you know, all forms. And it, it trains our brain not to think of things healthy. So you don't even have to see a commercial to want an hour later or candy. You're programmed right. already, you know? Yeah. And, and, and when you go into the dispensary nowadays, you truly, you don't see shelves full of flour. You see shelves full of fucking gummies and candy and sodas and shit like that. It's it's not a good situation. You know, we don't want to combat the cancer we're giving ourselves with the same lozenge that's got the sugar in it. And, the you know, it just doesn't make sense. So right. when it gets down to it, I just want people to think about what their vehicle for their cannabinoids is. And that's why it's important to kind of make that pantry. You know, once you get the source turbo, you start making RSO, start making olive oil low dose, start making this low dose, have a pantry not a sugar cabinet full of cannabinoids. Yeah, that's good. Um, that was one of the segments that we were going to kind of leave people with at the very end. And uh, so can you kind of give uh, some people or just some fun things that they can do with uh, maybe their vinegars or their oils or something that's not in that sugary baking realm, just some okay. ideas of stuff they can do. 
Yeah, you know, you you said that we are uh, foragers. Uh, Carla and I spend a lot of time out in the woods. We don't only forage for wild mushrooms. We file, we forage for our own wild psilocybin mushrooms. Um, we have like nine different wild psilocybe that grow here. These are from a park in Portland. Uh, you know what I mean? Ovoid season just ended, so we were plump with them. But with the cannabinoid cyst, uh, with your vinegar, you know what? I'm going to give you guys a few recipes and you can have them and make them make them available, excuse me, make them available for people so that they can see the different uses, a bunch of different uses um, once they start making them. But uh, uh, simple things like salad dressings. Um, if you have cannabis infused vinegar and you want to make a little bit of ceviche or marinated tomatoes or, you know, I mean, it's endless, endless. If you've got the olive oil that's infused or sesame oil, I mean, everything from a stir fry all the way down. And don't think that that second heat for any amount of time that you're going to expose the cannabinoids to is going to destroy things that are beneficial. We used to get really hyped back in the day, like, oh my God, you're double decarboxylating. You're going to destroy this shit. The pans and the stoves that you have aren't able to get into a situation where you're going to truly destroy or burn off vital, you know, terpenes and cannabinoids. You may be missing one or two or minute percentages of each one, but don't be afraid, you know, don't just fry your food in cannabis infused oil. You know, that's kind of a waste. But, <laughs> but by all means, if you're making something homemade and you're making a cake out of olive oil or butter and it calls for uh, cannabis, it calls for any butter, coconut oil, um, use the cannabis infused with the RSO that you made in the source turbo. It, it It's going to be full spectrum. It's going to be a dose that you can divide and control yourself because dosage is important and have multiple things that you can make, not just sweet, not just savory, like all around, you know, and I know a lot of people got into it and I mean me going off on a tangent here and you can just shut me up whenever you want. But a lot of people used to use um, uh, uh, like uh, sunflower lecithin because yeah. they thought that cannabinoids needed more things, fat particles to adhere to. But let me tell you what, through almost all of the experimentation and testing and research that we've done, vinegar is an acid. So it takes out another level of cannabinoids and terpenes. It's another extraction method. Think about it. Alcohol, vinegar, the difference is the pH level and the amount of alcohol. Yeah, you know, yeah, so yeah. you infuse vinegar of all kinds, rice wine vinegar, red wine vinegar, uh, white distilled vinegar. If you, you, if you distill white vine, use white distilled vinegar and cannabis infuse it, and then you make pickles, well, guess what? Those pickles got cannabinoids in them. Wow. I was just going to ask you about that. <laughs> That's an interesting candy. idea. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, yeah so Q. it's really, it's, it's, you're limiting yourself um, with the uh, delivery systems for cannabinoids. And we shouldn't do that because realistically, we need to feed the, the, the endocannabinoid system so that it doesn't fail later. We don't want to fix it when it's already broken. The vinegar is a really cool idea because you can pickle um, so many different vegetables, you know what I mean? Everything. Like asparagus and all sorts of things, you know? Yeah. That's a really cool idea because, like, cause, yeah, you were just making me think earlier about how when I've made edibles, of course, the first thing you go to is brownies or cakes yeah, or, right. like, what right. can I bake, basically, you know yeah, what I mean? Right. That has, like, a shit ton of butter in it, basically. Yeah. <laughs> That's so butter funny is okay. We would look at the recipes and do exactly that. We narrowed it down to like, was well, the shortbread cookies. Wow. Bro, they call for like a shit ton of butter. <laughs> and I don't <laughs> mind the taste of cannabis either. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, it's pecant or it's this. And it's like, it's cannabis. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, I like a hint of cannabis flavor in there. I don't like it to be like the gra green grass at home, but I like it to be a little hint of, you know, that nutty cannabis flavor in there. You know, before we had these cool machines like the Source Turbo and stuff, we we used to do the crock pot method. Some of us would have six crock yeah. pots at a time. Yeah. And that yeah. shit was green and dark and dirty, nasty, but <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Well, um, JR, I'm going to give you a second to look through, see if we have any last couple questions. I was also going to shout out to our live stream viewers. Uh, we had a bunch of people in the chat, like Psych Doctor and White Socks and Mac Buds and a bunch of other Crazy Pop Mom, all hanging out with us uh, late with our late night stream. Um, so uh, shout out to everyone in the Cannabis community. And if you're watching this, make sure to enter that uh, extract craft giveaway right on cannabis it's a giveaway.cannabis.app i have a post there where you just all you literally do is just put in your email and that email is just signing up us or signing you up for our email list so that we can let you know about future giveaways actually um so just sign up for that we're not going to give away your email or anything like that and we'll do a giveaway and uh it's just a great machine it's been I know, JR, you've had one now for like a few years, right? Because you've had yeah, one for a minute. Uh, yeah, before we upgraded to this new one, I'd had mine for four years. And it uh, the what I'd say about a year ago, uh, we needed to replace uh, the gaskets in it. I sent an email over, and within a few days, I had them on my doorstep for free, uh, zero charge. So... They're really good about supporting their product. The product has lasted me a very long time and got me through a tremendously hard part of my life. So uh, I can't thank those guys enough and all their generosity. And I also want to remind people uh, to go ahead and get out there and uh, support our, our, our cannabis shop. Uh, if you That's like what I'm some saying. The, if you like some of this cannabis gear, we got some cool shit out there. Uh, hit shop .app. Uh We'd love to have you uh, rocking our gear, buddy. Yeah, so um, this has been a really interesting episode. I really appreciate your time tonight, Chef, that um, you took the time to hang out with us tonight. We even had a special guest make a special appearance, which was great. Yeah. Uh, the, the check Thanks, will be Carla. in the mail. The, che the check will be in the mail to Carla. Um, but, uh, <laughs> and uh, we, uh, yeah, this was super interesting. Just like I was saying um, earlier, I was actually, just before the show, I was having this conversation with my wife about um, Rick Simpson oil and how it's helped with cancer. And it's just such a, it's just, I, I really appreciate hearing everyone's stories about how it's helped you because it's, I think those are very valuable stories. And like you were saying, JR, it's like, it helps with so many things. It's not just like one aspect of it. It's something that helps because it's a it's a whole life experience that you're going through. You know what I mean? You're not just like trying to fight this thing in your body. It's like also impacting you in so di so many different ways. Yeah, yeah, and it like I said, it's kind of just lubricates that whole mind fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you guys, if. Uh... They can get me at Chef Sebastian Carosi on Instagram and ask any questions. I'll try to answer them. I'm not a professional. I'm just going on what happened with my dad, what I've seen JR go through, Carla go through, you know. Um, and if you guys ever have time and you want to do like make a couple of quick batches of RSO or do a, a run through, I'd be more than happy to do it on another episode and make a couple of things simple like salad, salad dressing, you know, to cool. show people really how easy it is. Yeah, Pretty we would rad. love to set something like that up. I think people would really dig that. Yeah. Hell yeah. Well, um, any other uh, shout outs that you want to, or plugs, like websites or anything like that, that people could check out, Chef? No, you know, um, do your research. Uh, make sure that you um, just, you know, know if you're going to buy cannabis to make your RSO, know the source. Um, if you know Jr., he grows that cherry paloma. That shit is be on fire, and I know everybody says that. But <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you're going to make medicine, we're truly trying to teach people how to tailor the medicine to their medical needs, and that's the utmost important. The doctors and big pharma doesn't want to do that. They want you to buy their shit, and that's about all they want to do. All want you to do, you know. So uh, that Source Turbo is an expensive machine, but you know what? Your health is worth it. And they have that the even more expensive machine is worth it if you're running big production and you have patience. It really is. Yeah, yeah. I, I Uncle Jim is kind of like the the brains behind running the machine. And uh he said the ease of use of the larger machine is ridiculous. Nice. It's crazy nice. how far we've gotten from those crock pots, huh? <laughs> yeah. 
I had also a bunch of those little mini dippers because I didn't <laughs> yeah. have to do the dipper. The temperature was already preset for dip. Yeah. So I didn't have to get the right dialed in. So I had like four of those guys Hell yeah. rocking, you know. But yeah, good times. <laughs> totally. Uh, thanks, so Jeff, thanks again. You. Yeah, Cheers Chef, no problem. Guys. Before we let you go, uh, one last question. Are there any events yeah. that are coming up that people uh, should look for you at? So, you know, we have a um, we have a small event company. We actually, a couple of years ago, threw the second annual Autoflower Cup. Um, the can, It's called Camp Ruderalis. It's not really based on cannabis. It's based on cannabis, mushrooms, um, all types of uh, alternative, as they used to call them medicines, but as I call them, mainstream medicine now. Um, yeah. You know, so we we host, we take people out foraging for wild as a residence, wild ovoids, um, you know, and it's really going to be, it's going to be interesting because that, that source turbo, you know, making extract out of mushroom, uh, psil uh, um, psilocin and psilocybin and having it available on a, to a toothpick tip to be able to dose and in small levels um, is going to be phenomenal. Um, but so events really just keep your eyes open, get the can of buzz and see what they got to say, because, you know, you can find all what's going on in the cannabis world where JR's traveling to, you know? <laughs> Good times, chef. Good times. Well, yep, awesome. I really appreciate it. I appreciate yeah, we... you guys having me on. I really do. Thank you so much for your time this evening. We really appreciate it. Uh, this episode is going to be a really great resource for a lot of people in the community. Um, if you enjoyed the episode, make sure to follow Chef on Instagram. Keep in touch with him and follow his journey. He's always getting up to some good things and always has cool pictures and stuff like that. So stay, uh, make sure to stay in touch with him. And then, of course, uh, check out the Cannabuzz community over at cannabuzz.app in your browser or search Cannabuzz in the in the app store and use that code growers love for 50 percent off enter the giveaway at giveaway.cannabuzz.app support our friends over at grove bags cure your weed to perfection with a terp lock grove bag use the code cannabuzz for seven percent off and then lastly our friend tiki madman at tikiseeds.com he's got that summer sale going on so you got to grab that fire and you can rock that cannabis hat from shop.cannabis.app. I think that's all the shout outs, yeah. JR. Um, uh, so JR, uh, as always, we end the show with our, um, we hope everyone has a good one. And as always, growers, growers love. love. Hey, peace pot and micro dot. <laughs> <laughs>